Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today we're going to talk about the phrase laying it on thick. And that's when you purposefully exaggerate something in order for the picture to look like the way you want it to look. Let me explain. So imagine that you live in a rented house and you want the landlord to replace the carpets. Now, you know, (laughs) I think all around the world, that if you just call the landlord and you say, excuse me, can I have a new carpet, please? The answer is going to be no. Or the answer might be yes, if you pay for it. So you have to lay it on thick. You have to exaggerate a little bit in order to get what you want. So you call the landlord and you say, well, you know, I'm just looking at this carpet and my child just fell over the hole in it. He caught his foot in it and uh, it looks really bad. And then there's been those marks on it which have been there since I moved in. And uh, it's unfortunate that um, the leak in the roof meant that uh, the carpet is now a little bit damp or wet. So you have to exaggerate, lay it on thick to get what you want. And that's what the phrase means. And we, amongst ourselves here in the UK, we use this phrase to encourage each other. Oh, if you want a pay rise, remember, lay it on thick. In other words, tell your boss your circumstances, exaggerate. Uh, And also, you know, if you go to a shop and you want a discount, lay it on thick. Oh, well, you know, I'd like to buy that thing, but the price is just a little bit more than I'm willing to pay. Um, I was just in a shop next door and they had it a little bit lower. So you have to be ready to lay it on thick. Now, there's a couple of ways people do this, okay? Um, Professional flattery. Oh, you're great. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, you're the best salesman we ever had. Yeah. And then uh, there's in a sales pitch, you know, where you overstate the benefits of a product. Oh, if you buy this, I'm sure you'll become very, very rich in a short time you know and then there's the one i like oh you're the best english teacher ever oh i love your lessons yeah yeah anyway um that's personal flattery and then there's another one uh which is artistic exaggeration for example politicians They exaggerate all the time, don't they, to get their own way. Well, we really have to invade this country before it invades us. And they can be very convincing, can't they? Uh, An an author might say it about a book review. Um, Or artists do it, don't they? Especially art critics. You know, they look at a piece of painting. And we can see here with this uh, stroke of the brush... It really does exemplify the artist's deeply repressed feelings for the lady with whom he was having a relationship. What? (laughs) You can say that from a, you can see that from a a, a paint stroke? I don't think so. Um, So those are examples of laying it on thick. And of course, it pushes up the value of things especially in a volatile market such as the stock market. Um, So laying it on thick. There's also personal compliments, exaggerating someone's appearance to try to win them over to your point of view. Um, uh, Extravagant descriptions, you know, elevating a simple item by simply exaggerating it more. Uh, overstating the experience or quality of food to enhance its perceived value. 
Here, if someone does it too much, we might describe them as being insincere. For example, we have a, a, a TV presenter here who's always like that. Oh, you're great. Oh, you're fantastic. Oh, you're looking so good. Oh, you're back with your wife after the divorce. Oh, that's lovely. You know, it can come across as being fake, laying it on thick. Now, the best way to, dis to describe this and the best way to think about it is if you imagine making a sandwich and you're putting a lot of peanut butter or jam on the bread, okay? Lay it on nice and thick to make it more delicious. Lots of sugar, yeah, people will love that. That's the best way to think of this phrase. And that's exactly the way we use it to describe particular moments. So, for example, if I'm calling my landlord, let's say, to get that new carpet, uh, my friend might say, remember, nice and thick, lay it on nice and thick so that they get the picture of what you're trying to say. A few days ago, I did a podcast about this post office scandal, and now we have all of these sub-postmasters. Sub-postmaster is someone who operated a sub-post office, which means not a main one, but a little one, usually attached to another type of shop. And uh, they were wrongfully accused, and some of them went to prison for um, stealing money before it was discovered that there was a fault in the computer system. So because of that, um, they're all on TV now, and they're all laying it on nice and thick to get people sympathy. I mean, I don't blame them, of course, because they deserve the sympathy, but everything you know, can be exaggerated a little bit so that you can see things from a particular point of view. So laying it on nice and thick. So it's all about exaggeration in order to get what you want, you know. Um, I was with a friend the other day and he went to join a gym. And the woman said, oh, you want to join the gym? Yeah, it was a woman, okay. So she said to him, oh, you want to join this gym? Well, of course, uh, you'll need new workout trainers. That's, you know, the, the workout shoes, as they call them in American English, training shoes. You'll need new workout trainers, a new warm-up outfit, uh, a wristband, a headband. And he said, but I, I have my own gear and she said, oh, sorry. I mean, I thought when you said you wanted to join the gym that you were serious about joining. But that's okay. I mean, if you don't want any of this stuff, I mean, well, you can join anyway. So there, she wasn't praising him, but she was overselling her things by saying how great they are. Um, and that's also laying it on thick because her response oh, well, sorry, I thought you were serious, so let's just forget about these things. That's a sales tactic, of course. It was very funny. <laughs> um, I experienced this the other day because one of my New Year resolutions was to join a meditation class. So, of course, it was on Zoom. So I finished my, my teaching day, and then I joined the Zoom class, and this woman didn't teach me how to meditate, but she spoke a lot about how meditation works. I thought, yeah, yeah, very good, very good. And she said, you know, well, uh, you'll need, of course, a teacher. You'll need, of course, uh, many different things. And then, of course, you'll need your secret mantra words. Uh, which you can get from us at £500. And then you'll need a residential retreat for four days, which will cost you um, in excess of £300. 
we can come to your house to do it, which will cost you five thousand pounds. And I'm thinking, well, all I want to do is learn how to meditate. I don't need your secret mantra word. So I said, okay, well, what what's special about your secret mantra word? And she said, oh well, you know, of course. Only our meditation system is proven to work and to change anything. I said, okay, well, can you give me an example of the secret mantra word? What kind of mantra word is it? I mean, where do they come from? Oh, they come from an ancient place in an ancient part of the world, you know. Uh, don't worry, it will be yours after your teacher meets you, interviews you, and you pay the money. So she was laying it on nice and thick, telling me the importance of the secret words. So you see, even though she didn't exaggerate anything, she still created a particular box and expected me to uh, fall into it. So there we are, laying it on nice and thick. Flattery, you know, personal compliments, uh, artistic exaggeration, um, extravagant descriptions, or just trying to, without using flowery language, try to catch you some kind of sale. And that is laying it on thick. We'll go through some examples. I mean, I had a message uh, on the system the other day you know, I teach on Italki. So basically, uh, it was less in time. And I received a message. Uh, and the woman said, Oh, sorry, you know, I can't come to our lesson today. This morning, I fell over the dog, I fell down the stairs, I broke my arm, and was taken to hospital. Um, on leaving the hospital, uh, unfortunately, when they were wheeling me out of the hospital on a wheelchair, uh, they lost control and the wheelchair ran into a door which ultimately caught my leg and I had to be readmitted back to the hospital. Then my dog died on the same day. Um, so you can imagine that I'm in no state to take an English lesson. Now, all she had to say was, would you mind if I reschedule? Probably I would have said yes, it depends. I mean, if she'd done it before, I might have said no, but generally I try to be flexible, you know? She didn't have to give me the whole list. And it was exaggerated so that I would feel sorry for her, of course. If she said she was in hospital, that's all she needed to say, you know? But anyway, despite the fact that she was very sick. She was still able to type the message for me. And uh, she clearly was still able to get to a computer or a telephone and use her fingers to type it. Uh, and as soon as the lesson time has passed, she was able to request a reschedule very quickly. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm doubting her, but she was certainly laying it on nice and thick. So... Yeah, that's a good example of someone laying it on nice and thick. Right, so some other examples might be, this isn't just a car. It's the key to a new life. Uh, you're not just the best employee. You're the best employee this company has ever had. And then there's the politics, of course. This is not merely a great plan that we're proposing. It's the most brilliant idea in recent years. Um, and then, of course, there's at a party. Oh, you don't just look good tonight. You outshine every star in the sky. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, in a book review, uh, this isn't just a good read. It's a life-changing experience which will redefine literature forever. I remember an old boss of a language school. We moved into the company's new premises and he gave a speech. Oh, this, this building which we've built will change the skyline of this city 
forever. Well, they did change the skyline uh, for about two months before they built a higher building next door. Um, uh, yeah, while giving a gift, this isn't just a gift. This is a wonderful expression of my love for you. Yeah. Uh, during a recommendation, oh, he's not just a hard worker. He's a powerhouse of productivity and innovation. Um, oh, yeah, the restaurant reviews, they're funny as well. This isn't just a meal. John and his team took me on a culinary journey that transformed my taste buds forever. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, so these are examples of laying it on thick. And it's very common to say this. Even to talk about laying it on thick is equally uh, common, okay? Laying it on thick. So just imagine that you're making that sandwich and you're putting a layer of peanut butter or jam on there nice and thick to cover everything uh, so that you can't see the bread. Yeah, that's a good metaphor. And that's where it comes from, laying it on thick. Right, so, excellent. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this today. Um, it's very cold here, very cold. I'm supposed to be going uh, out later. Uh, but it really is freezing, so I'll need to look at the temperature and see where I end up. Whatever you're doing today, I hope you have a lovely day, and uh, I'll catch you all again soon. See you. Bye.